Hello, today we're going to look at appending data, why we, did it, we would append data, what the use case for appending data is, and, and what exactly is appending data. So let's head on over to the Excel spreadsheet. Now that we're back on the Excel spreadsheet, you can see that we have two separate tables. We've got one table from California sales and one table from Arizona sales. Now, if we want to combine these data sets so that we can compare both of the regions, Appending data is a great option in this case. So just as simple, simple, what is appended data? You can see up here this table from California, this table from Arizona, we have the same headers right here, and they're going to be put into one table. So California is up here, as you can see, and the Arizona data sets down here. Simple as that. Now, when you get a lot of data, it's a lot easier to use Power Query to do this so that once these tables are updated, you can automatically flow through to your new data set. So that's what we're going to be going over in today's video. As you can see down here, we've got three separate tabs from sales data from each different state. We're going to load all of this data into Power Query and we're going to append all of this data so that we can do comparison between the states on the sales. Now, first things first, I always like to put everything into a table format. It's a lot easier to work with, Excel's a lot happier, and it's a lot easier to change your data and for it to flow through correctly. So quick and easy, Control A to select everything, or you can drag and select everything. Control T for table. My table does have headers, it's checked, press OK. And I'm gonna rename this table Arizona. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the California and the Washington data set. And again, just a Washington control A to select everything. Control T to table. If you don't want to use control T, that's okay. You can select everything. Go to data and excuse me, you go to insert table right here. Select okay. Same thing. Now that we're on table design, renaming it Washington. Perfect. Let's get our data sets in the Power Query. So click anywhere inside of our first table and we're going to go to data. And from table slash range right here, this little button tells us, hey, I want to upload this table into Power Query. As you can see, we've got our data table loaded into the Power Query editor. I'm going to close and load here and we're going to load our other two tables in here before we do any transformation. So select close and load, close and load two, and it's going to ask us, do we want to load it back into a table? In this case, we don't. We just want to load it as a connection. So only create connection, select OK. And we're going to repeat this process. As you can see, the queries and connection pane popped up on the right hand side to show us that we've got a table loaded in there. Same process now with California. We're going to click in here. We're going to go to the data tab. We're going to go from table and range. Just simply loading it in, perfect, we're good to go. Since we already pre-named these tables, the name is gonna pop up over here. Just kind of makes it easier for the back end. Closing and loading. Connection only, okay. And one more, click in here, data tab from table and range. Ah, look, we forgot to name the table over here. That's okay. I'm actually gonna close this. I'm gonna select discard. And I'm going to click in here, go table design, name this Washington. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, data from table and range. And now we get that nice, nice table name there. We could have also renamed it in here, but it wouldn't have changed the original table name. Perfect. Now we've got all three tables loaded in here. Power Query is super easy to work with and pretty user friendly. So one thing we're going to do is we are going to just click on the first one up here. We're going to go to the home tab and there's two different options here for combining data. We got the merging queries and we have appending queries. In this case, we're going to do, we're going to stack our queries. We're going to append the data. I'm going to do a drop down over here and it gives us two options. We can append onto the query that we are loaded or we can append as a new query. Since I'm appending all three of these together, I'm going to put them as a new query. There's cases for each of them. If you, if you don't care, uh, you can just append under the cur current query you're on. It doesn't really matter. 
you're gonna get this pop-up over here. Now, if you're doing a simple append and it's only two tables, you get the default option will work. In this case, we've got more than two. We got three, three or more tables. I'm gonna select right here. It's gonna give us options. It's gonna say, hey, which tables are you looking to append? In this case, we're actually looking to append all of our tables. So I'm gonna select our California, Arizona's already in there. Select add, select Washington, select add. So tables to append over here, we want all three of our tables, select okay. And now Power Query is just going to stack all of our tables. So look how easy this was. We've got our state over here, Arizona, California, Washington, scrolling on down. We've got our date, we've got our order ID. In this case, it was super easy to append because all of our column names were exactly the same. Well, what happens if our column names weren't exactly the same? Say California had a, this was price per unit instead of our original column name. Let's come on back over here. Let's check out how this that would check that would affect our appended query. As you can see, we've got unit price for the other queries for Arizona. But on our California data, we've got it in a separate column, price per unit. Well, you can go back and you can change that. So my suggestion would be to go into your original queries, do any renaming that is necessary in order to make your columns line up from each of the queries. So in this case, I'm gonna go back to California. Since I just renamed the column, I'm just gonna delete the step of renaming the column and that'll go back to unit price and we'll be good to go. But if you set your data up in the beginning to be consistent, you can append uh, immediately right away. So headed on back, let's load this back into our Excel spreadsheet so that we can uh, do some comparisons. In this case, we're gonna close and load. I'm gonna close and load too. I'm still gonna close and load it to a connection because it would load back our last table we loaded and I don't, I don't want it to do that. So I'm headed over, let's create a new sheet. And I'm gonna load append one into this, into a pivot table on this sheet. I'm gonna right click over here, select load to. Load it to a pivot table report on my existing sheet. I'm gonna stick it right there, select okay. And now what we can do is we can take our state ID, we can take, uh, let's put a product category and take total sales right here. And we can easily compare across the regions how the sales performance was. As you can see, there's grand totals on the bottom. If I want grand totals on top, I've got plenty of videos on how to use pivot tables. I can, I can add that by going to the design tab up here, grand totals on for rows and columns. So I can check out which state has the highest sales and in which categories. Now, big use case for this is, hey, I need to change some of this data. Or in this case, let's see, I've got Let's make this a short date so it's easier to read. I've got new sales data for a new month in here and I'm gonna add it to this table. Well, that's okay. Let's say we've got, we've got one more sale coming in for 8-1, 8-1-24 and the, the unit price in that case was 100. So that's gonna be 400 for total sales. So this is our new line right here. I've just added it to my Arizona table and, and you'd probably add a lot more data than this. And I wanna do a quick update. Well, the beautiful part about this is since you ran it through Power Query, the only thing you have to do is right click and select refresh and you see that number just changed right there to add in our new line. That's what makes it super easy and Power Query super user friendly. If you like this video, go check out some other videos on my YouTube channel. Thanks.